And then one of the other things that we do in, in our business is we are constantly doing research um, as well as, as many others in the ag business as well. And so when we look at the, the image that's up here, this is some small plot research that we did um, where we actually take tens of thousands of, of different crosses and try to compare them um, to then sort down to the 25 or, or 30 that you'll put in the catalog. And so one of the things that we're looking at is, you know, what's the maturity rating on those and is the maturity really what we've rated it at compared to other things out there? Because really at the end of the day, when you look at a maturity rating on a hybrid or a soybean variety, it's just a relative difference to everything else uh, its peers. And so a lot of times you're just trying to say, okay, where does it fall in with its peers? And we've always done that in the past by sending countless numbers of people to the field with clipboards and they make evaluations that are somewhat subjective. Uh, my, my group 3.7 and Chad's may be two different uh, uh, judgments there as far as how mature something is. And so with this, what it does is it makes it much more quantifiable and we get a much better overview of what's going on in the whole field. The other thing that's really cool about this is uh, when you take these trials that are not only maybe some of these are, will be actually a breeding programs and other of them will be yield trials. And in yield trials, you can find that, that perhaps a, a variety that has done very well all over all kinds of other plots does very poorly in a plot. But then you can see through an image like this, you can say, oh, well, the reason it did poorly is obviously because it was in a water hole in this particular plot, whereas in the other plots, they were much more uniform. And so it gives you an opportunity to say one or two things. You can say either that we know that that hybrid doesn't like wet feet, and so we should recommend people don't put that in excessively wet areas. Uh, or we say, okay, that data was skewed because it was in that water hole, so let's throw that out. So for, for dry down and maturity, it's a, it's a really powerful tool. Also, we've got folks that are using it with silage. We've got silage growers who struggle to make sure that they chop green silage or they chop the right uh, moisture silage. And so they're trying to scout their fields, but it's just virtually impossible to scout thousands and thousands of acres to find out how things are drying down. So we've seen some folks up in the Thumb of Michigan who are using this technology. Not only are they doing that, but then I think Chad's going to talk a little bit about uh, measuring volumetrics, and, and they find that to be very valuable too as they look at their silage piles. So, so they're finding some really significant value with it uh, as how to use it when you're looking at some of these uh, silage issues. And then also we, we've used it uh, here to, to evaluate soybean dry down and senescence, and then where do we manage and send our uh, uh, tractors and, our, and equipment to the field. And so you can see here that that in this particular image, basically what we had going on here was we knew that in this particular field that the hilltops were drying up, which is, would be a, a classic uh, silage problem scenario where you're drying up or you're burning up on the hilltops, but you're still green in the bottoms. And so if you are burning up, you've got to make sure that you, uh, that you get the right amount of, of dry and, and wet uh, silage in that, in that chopping system. And so as you see those, those hilltops dry up even more, then you're probably going to have to work longer hours in, in those uh, conditions.